The second major topic to understand before we get into induction is magnetic flux. This is kind of a busy slide, so let's take it in pieces here. Magnetic flux tells you how many magnetic field lines pass in a perpendicular direction through a given surface area. Okay, so the field lines have to be perpendicular and it has to go through a given surface area. So, if, for example, if I have Here's a piece of paper, and if I have lines coming out of the board, oh, that's not a real good dot. Remember, the dot shows that the field lines come out. They're perpendicular, so in this case, the flux would be four lines per this given area. That's all we're really talking about. How many magnetic field lines flow through a certain area? Phi is the Greek letter phi, and it stands for flux or flow. The unit of magnetic flux is the Weber, and one Weber just equals one Tesla meter squared. And we're also going to talk again about the concept of normal. We did that in mechanics, all right? Normal is a line that is perpendicular to the surface. Uh, the magnetic flux, therefore, would be maximum where it is parallel to the normal. So please don't get tripped up with the perpendicular and parallel and everything else there. But the normal would be perpendicular to the surface, so let's, let's just change the color there. Here's a normal line coming out of the board. The normal is perpendicular. The magnetic field lines here are perpendicular to the surface, but the normal is parallel to the field lines. So when we get a maximum flux, we have field lines. The magnetic field lines are perpendicular to the surface. That's a perpendicular part and the field lines are also parallel to the normal to the surface. Here's a pictorial representation of magnetic flux. We have this surface here that again pictured as kind of coming out of the board. It's hard to do 3D on a flat piece of paper. And this is a loop of wire and we have a magnetic field going down. The blue lines are the magnetic field. The normals are these red lines. You can see how they're perpendicular. Hopefully you can see how they're perpendicular to the surface. So in this case, we have the magnetic flux, the magnetic field lines are parallel to the normal, perpendicular to the surface, and the flux, which is defined as B perpendicular times A, all of the magnetic field lines are perpendicular. So the flux is at a maximum, and it's equal to the value of the magnetic field B times the surface area of this loop. Here's the other extreme of magnetic flux. This time we have the magnetic field going to the right and again we have this wire loop coming out of the page. So what we have here is the normal is going up and down and you can see how the magnetic field is perpendicular to it and the magnetic field lines are also parallel to the plane. So in this case, the magnetic flux, which is B perpendicular times A, well, there's no B perpendicular here. It's all parallel, so the flux is at a minimum. It's zero. There's an easier way to look at this. Take this cross-sectional area here of the wire loop, and it's extending out of the board. You can see the lines are going past it. None of the lines are actually cutting through like that, cutting through the plane. So if there are no magnetic field lines going through the plane of the loop, there is zero flux. The magnetic flux is proportional to the total number of magnetic field lines passing through the loop. We've already talked about the limiting cases, where the magnetic field is perpendicular to the normal and where it's parallel. The next two slides are going to cover what happens in the intermediate area right here, when it's neither 90 or 0. Okay, so we have a constant magnetic field directed to the right, and we have a loop. Here's a loop where the angle of its normal with the magnetic field is 90 degrees. You can see the right angle here. Over here, it's somewhere between 0 and 90, kind of looks like 45 degrees. And we're starting to get some flux. You see lines going through it, but you're not showing the whole area to the lines. You can see that it's at an angle here. Then when we rotate it, we have zero degrees between the flux, which is this direction, and the normal, we have a maximum flux. Continuing, you can see that the magnetic flux is a minimum 
when the field lines, which are directed to the right, make an angle of 90 degrees with the normal. Physically, you can see that none of these field lines are going through, their, going through the loop. Some are going over the top of it, some are going through the bottom, but none are going through. We start rotating the loop, and you can now see that the field lines are going through, but again, you're not presenting a full cross-sectional area to the field lines here. They're kind of spread out. This is very similar to uh, winter, summer, spring, and fall, right? When the Earth is tilted towards the sun, you have more field lines or sun lines hitting it, you get warmer. Same idea here with magnetic flux. I keep rotating until now we're perpendicular and you've got a maximum flux. The field lines are all parallel to the normal and the most lines are going through the area. So you have maximum flux there. 